Uh, okay. Mm. okay. So for the next few minutes, I would like to speak about the maps of voivode ships and sketch of parishes of car operators from the end of the 18th century and about data model and methods which were used to elaborate these uh, sources. Uh, works about which I'm going to report are part of the ongoing project with the title Too Long to Read, uh, read Out Loud in 10 minute presentation. So I will just leave it on the slide. Uh, and the one of the aims of the project is to use the mentioned sources to reconstruct the settlement network of the western part of the Kingdom of Poland in its borders after the first partition in the last years of the existence of this state. Uh, the person responsible for creating the maps in the sketch was Karol Poltes. He was a court cartographer of the last king of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth, Stanisław August Poniatowski. Uh, his most important works were the so called particular maps of voivode ships. Uh, these were the first maps of Poland at a large scale, which covered a large part of its territory. Because of the lack of possibility to conduct broad field uh, measurements, Petes has, to be, has been searching for the other detailed sources uh, of information for his maps. And with help came the brother of the king, head of the Polish Catholic Church, uh, Primat Michał Jerzy Poniatowski. Around the year 1782-1785, he organized parish surveys in all dioceses of the Gniezno province. Persons to whom uh, these sur surveys were sent answered the question about settlements, borders, roads, and the natural landscape of their parishes. Their answers, so-called description of parishes, covered the territory of the western part of the Kingdom of Poland uh, and the most of the Grand Duchy of uh, Lithuania. Um, because uh, maybe we clarified the Kingdom of Poland historically, there is also, that is there also Ukraine. So when I'm speaking about Kingdom of Poland, Western Poland, we I speaking about the mostly the central and uh, eastern uh, Poland, like like it look today. Uh, so. Uh, there, they covered the territory of the western part of the Kingdom of Poland and most of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. Unfortunately, the description of parishes for the Polish territory had been destroyed during the Second World War, and the reach of the description is shown of, uh, on this map. However, shortly after the creation, um, description became the base for the sketches made by Karol Peters and his team. The work started probably around 1785 and lasted for around 10 years. The sketches covered the territory of the Western Crown for which the description were, uh, were lost. Full title of the sketches is Geographical and Statistical Description of the Parishes of the Kingdom of Poland. There are 12 uh, manuscripts that contain information about uh, 2,069 parishes, which are ordered by dioceses, archdeaconries, and deaneries. Uh, they were made as a draft for the maps, and uh, that purpose we can see on every page. Uh, one folio of sketch is source of information on one parish. Uh, the main element is usually a draft of a parish map with settlements, road, rivers, and forests. Besides that, a page contains textual information about the parishes, parish, her settlements, and its territory. Uh, the sketch were preliminary materials for Peters' maps of voyage ships. Other sources, like uh, some older maps, were used, but the sketches played the key role. Uh, and the territorial reach of the maps uh, can be seen on the slide that is the uh, yellow color. Uh, there are 12 maps which cover, cover 11 voyage ships. Mazovia voyage ship has two versions of the map. However, maps of the voivodeship of Gniezno and Sieracz were never made. Uh, 
Voivodship were the largest administrative units of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. The map are on scale 1 to 225,000, and what is very important, the lag geometric precision. Errors on the map are normally up to a few kilometers. This should not be surprised considering that they are not based on uh, measurement. Uh, content of the map is may slightly differ, but mostly it was typical for similar scale maps from this period. So taking as an example of the, the legend from the map of Płock Wojewodship, we can see that settlement, that settlement and places are marked according to their character, size and functions. Hydrography, afforestation and roads are represented. Uh, and on maps, there are also shown boundaries of, of administrative units and information about kings and church properties. Uh, to use such different source to reconstruct the settlement network, we have adopted three level data modeling. The first model is brought out from the structure of source. We call it a source driven data model. As any effect of such approach, a data set. Uh, which can be considered as a semi-source edition is created. This model serves to store data about localities in their, in their source form. Uh, this is also means that the data from sketches and maps are collected and stored separately. The harmonization of data from these two sources come later in the critical model where a proper description of settlements is contained. Uh, however, because uh, data from both sources are not easy to join, there is need for any additional semi-critical model to elaborate data from one source and create two lists of localities which can be compared. Here you can see this model once again and information about user technologies. Uh, so we get the data with the use of GIS type software for storing data. We use the relational database uh, PostgreSQL. Uh, however, for uh, the publication of data, other solutions will be used, uh, such like uh, RDS. Uh, the data structure for sketches consists of four tables, ordered hierarchically, which are connected by relation one to many. The highest level is table volumes, and below table, the table is uh, pages. And the third level is table entries. In our data model, entries are fragments of a page containing specific and uniform types of information. For example, administrative information, affiliation, or a list of uh, localities. Uh, this looks um, something like that. That the, the, This information on every page are in that same place, more or less. Uh, and the last one is table terms, uh, which contain information about named settlements, uh, which can be found uh, in the sketches. For gathering data from scans, we use application indexer, which is a program dedicated to working with uh, the scans of manuscripts. Contrary to what it may look, it is a GIS application. Uh, it treats a manuscript uh, as uh, a space and al analogically as other GIS software, it can assign attributes to the part of uh, the space. Uh, it is describing, a, so in our case, it is describing a fragment of scan or content of this fragment. Uh, the source data model for the maps of voivod ships is adequate to their specific. However, the first thing which must be said is that, that the maps were not georeferenced. Uh, the errors on the map are too big and georeferencing them does not bring any advantages. So maps were only placed next to each other in the GIS. Data model for elaborating maps is more spatial oriented and less hierarchical. At the top there is a table for characterizing uh, maps as a uh, whole uh, Units uh, in terms of in, like we see that in our archive, uh, and on the map division of the scan uh, were marked. Uh, they are similar to entries which are in use to describe sketch. Uh, these units can be them uh, on the maps can be either administrative, so the borders there we there are drawn by borders of districts or voivodships. 
uh, all can be the part of a maps layout, like the example, the uh, legend or uh, scale uh, bar. Divisions are contained in the table spatial units. A more complex is approach to localities market uh, on the map. To deal with many unclear cases, the symbols of objects were separated from the labels and uh, both uh, form uh, separate tables in our data model. However, there is no direct connection between uh, these two layers. They exist uh, next to each other. The, and the connection is made by an additional layer called features. Features store simple geometry in which both symbols and uh, labels are the, of that same determinant that are connected. And by that, uh, they create information about the single locality shown on the map in the database model. Uh, however, uh, data obtained from maps and sketch are not prepared for harmonization uh, with each other on, and to be used for the reconstruction of the settlement network. For example, on the sketch side, uh, there, are so ma there are many repetitions of localities which demand clarification. Uh, so the adaptation of the semi-critical model was required. Uh, for this procedure, additional tables were created for both sources. Uh, these tables are based on tables terms from the sketches model and features from the maps model. Uh, Semi-critical table contain only one record per settlement about which information from the source was elaborated and standardized. And what is most important in this phase, we add reference to external databases, to the National Register of, Ge of Ge Geographical Names with contemporary data, and to the database, the map of Polish land of the crown in the 16th century, which we prepare in some uh, one from our, uh, of our other project. Uh, linking the external sources is ground for the harmonization between sketches and maps. Foreign IDs are used to automatically compare data from both sources, and the result of this compression compression is decide about filling the final table, which will contain a list of settlements from the end of the 18th century. At this moment in our project, we are on the end of the populating semi-critical tables with data, and after the first test of filling the final table, the results show uh, that around 50-60% of settlements from the two sources can be connected automatically, uh, but improvements, improvements in the procedure will probably boost those scores. And on that, I would like to end my presentation. And thank you for your attention.